All right, welcome back to YouTube. Another painting update. It's only been uh, six days since I started on these guys. I was really hoping to have them done Monday. Um, I did get to paint over the weekend. My wife was gone at her friend's birthday and that did afford me a decent amount of painting time. Not quite as much as what I wanted, but, but a decent amount nonetheless. Um, I got a really good amount of painting in on Sunday and Friday. Saturday was just a no-go. Um, my, my kid was just, uh, yeah, he was just, he was just a lot to handle. And I just, by the time night rolled around and he went to bed, I was too pooped to paint. So I think I just watched TV a little bit and went to bed instead of painting. It'd have been nice had I got another hour or two in. Um, but I still got them done in less than a week. So no complaints there. This is the second half of the, uh, the, uh, immortals, the early immortals. Now, I officially have all the miniatures I need uh, for, for, the, uh, for the rest of the Persian army. I ordered a, another two or another unit of the armored spearmen, so that'll make up both my early and late Kingsguard type units. And then I ordered a unit of light unarmored cavalry. Um, those guys will have bow cases and javelins, so they'll be, they'll be legit light cavalry. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and then I ordered two chariots, which I'll show you here in just a minute after we're done with the, with the painting update here. But, uh, but yeah, so technically the army is collected and mostly painted. Um, now with that being said, I noticed, I think I was watching JP Miniatures, um, I'll link his channel below, but he's also doing Persians. I think he's doing later Persians or even like successors like uh, uh, Seleucids. Uh, but so, you know, there's going to be Persian elements in that army. And uh, he had a unit of uh, Lycian javelin men. And they're, they are from the Polemark range of Gripping Beast. And uh, I'm thinking... I'm gonna need a unit of those guys. I really want some Lycians, um, or Lycans, I don't know, however you wanna say that, because um, Herodotus noted them as, you know, they were true, they were from a region in Turkey, they were a part of the Achaemenid army for a while, they're, they're noted by Herodotus fighting in the Greco-Persian Wars, um, so I think, I think I'm gonna have to add one more unit of 24 to the army. Uh, and they're great mentors. He did a really good job. I'll link his channel below. Um, I really like his painting style. And interesting enough, I think he says he builds his units for uh, not WAB, but Kings of War historical. Now, me and Holy Diver, uh, Holy Diver loves Kings of War fantasy. And we played some of the historical. He has the historical rules too. And we played some of that. Um, we ended up going to Hell Caesar. And then sword point, and then now we're on wab. Uh, but yeah, so so big. Uh, I have never seen anybody else play. Uh, yeah, play uh, historical, um, historical kings of war. So that's what the rules he uses. Um, I, I've enjoyed. I've been enjoying watching his painting updates and, and his stuff. I went back and watched a whole bunch. Um, but yeah, so this is the second half of the unit. I did it in this, the same two shades of purple. I actually think these guys turned out a little bit better than the first half. I don't know why. I didn't put any more love into them. I think that, you know, the brush just favored me on this group. I did the same thing, same mix of patterns, um, same mix of armors, as you can see. Some guys in the padded, some guys in the linen. I didn't do a whole lot of work on the, on the faces, just uh, a base coat, uh, a wash, and a highlight. But yeah, and uh, the, the, this is the commander. Obviously, he has the the, the cape on there. Um, this is actually contrast. So this is uh, yeah, I know. Holy divers gonna be like, oh, you like uh, you like GW, and it's like I actually have probably ten ten of the uh, contrast colors. Now I have their entire brown range, two of their yellows, and their a couple of their flesh flesh tones. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is. This is the uh, their yellow, their new yellow, uh, Bad Moon, Bad Moon yellow, 
and uh, it's a really good saturated color and then I just highlight it. I washed it after that and then highlighted it. Um, you could just straight up put it on a white or xenophil uh, base coat and be good to go. Um, I did a mix, mostly red cuirasses, um, but I did have a couple whites in there. Um, this guy turned out pretty good. I like him with the hacking of the sword and the Corinthian helmet. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think they, they, I just really like how the way how these guys turned out. They just turned out good. I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I did give them a little bit more love. I particularly like this guy with the axe. Particularly like him. I think his cuirass turned great. His uniform turned great. Um, he was the only one I didn't do patterns on in the whole, whole group here. Um, but yeah, so we got... I think all in all, out of the unit of 24, I got one, two, three, four, five that have swords and axes out, and the rest are all spear armed. So, polka dot man there. His nice scale cuirass. I love the scale cuirass. Yeah, these are these are really nice miniatures. Um, you know, my only gripe that I've came across so far from the Vitrix is their armored spearmen only had uh, 12 of the large uh, figure eight body shields inside of them. So if you want to do a Uno you know, 24 of those types of spearmen, you, you got to buy two sets. And then you're going to use the figures from the other set for something else. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, that's, that's my only real gripe so far about the Vitrix stuff. Um... I mean, I could say that there's no standing poses. I would have liked to seen some like standing at the ready poses. These guys are all attacking. As you can see, everyone, everyone's attacking. Um, I, I like attacking units, but I like to have a mix of attacking and uh, at rest units or standing units. And these guys are all attacking. Um, not not a big deal, but um, and that's that is like that is being nitpicky as hell. Uh, most people are going to prefer an attacking. On this type of hoplite spearman unit. But yeah, this guy, this is one of the very few besides the commander that has the uh, Thracian or the Phrygian helmet there. I love that helmet. It's so Macedonian. I know I'm using these guys for uh, for early for the early period, so ha perhaps having the Thracian helmets might be a little anachronistic. Uh, but I don't care. I like them. And I, and I was short on helmets, so, you know, I borrowed from the cavalry set, and the cavalry set had those uh, Phrygian Thracian helmets in them. And the last two guys, the pores, they can't afford a helmet or metal armor, so they're just uh, rocking the padded stuff. So I might have them make up, like, the back ranks, the guys in the padded stuff, and this is, like, a straight-up padded cuirass with the little hat there. Yeah, so I'm actually really happy the way these guys turned out. So that's another unit done. Um, the shields, I've already began the work on the shields. I got them primed. I got them cut out. I just need to put the transfers on the shields, paint the shields, and glue the shields. Um, so another hour or two, and then, then these guys will be based and ready to go. Uh, and then it will be on to a unit of cavalry, uh, the second to last unit of cavalry. So essentially all we got, two units of cavalry left, two units of infantry. I mean, that's it. And, and the army's going to be complete, unless I want to get those, uh, like, those uh, Lycan Marines, uh, which, which I'm not going to lie, I'm probably going to do. Um, so that'll, that'll be another unit to the army. And uh, I, in addition to the two units of cavalry and infantry to paint, I got two of these to paint. Brush these spearmen to the side. Bam. This is Gripping Beast from their Polemark range, Successor Chariots. They have two different ones, um, an A and a B. Now these are uh, four-horsed skidged chariots with a Persian-type driver. He's in pedal, metal Persian-type armor. Um, now they're meant to, to be for Seleucids, but... They meet the good criteria, I think, for an early or late uh, Achaemenid 
chariots, especially late because we know at Galgamela the, the Persians had chariots. And we know from Arian, the Persians used four horse chariots for their, uh, for their skid chariots. And that's what these guys are. So I, I think, I think it's not even going to be anything crazy to have this in a, in a actual Persian army, even though it's not, you know, they're technically for Seleucids. Um, I, I think these will be at home just fine. And, and, and that's going to be the army guys. We got the two, the two skid chariots. Um, the the elephants i don't know what i'm if i'm going to do elephants or not i'm really on the fence because i'm probably going to buy an entire classical indian army and that's going to come with elephants and if i want elephants i'm just going to sub those in there because the persians would have used indian elephants anyways and chances are they would have used indian mahouts as well and even maybe even indian crews right so it's hard to say. We don't know a lot about the Persian War elephant use. Um, so it, I think there's some wiggle room there. So if I get an, an entire classical Indian army, which I am eyeballing the first core army deal, hardcore. Um, so yeah, I'll be on the look. So I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if elephants get in there. But at the very least, we got the two chariots and we got tons of cavalry and tons of infantry. And then we have Greeks and Thracians we can add to it as well that aren't a core part of the army, but, uh, you know, tons of Greeks and Thracians and Scythians um, fought for the Persians. So it's not not a big deal to have those as uh, mercenary or allied troops. So till, till next time, guys, keep on painting and enjoy your hobby time.